Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 607. Doctor's Appointments. How to get what you need. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we are going to talk about your office appointments with your doctor. And any kind of doctor in general, but mostly primary care doctors like internal medicine doctors and family medicine, OBGYN. Um, Doctor's appointments have changed drastically over the last 30 years since I came out of medical school. And actually that's probably more like 40. In any case, Uh, They have changed. We used to have a long period of time to talk to our patients. We used to be able to ask them many questions and go over many problems. And that was before HMOs and PPOs and managed care came on the scene. So we had a specific list of things that we had to understand from you and the primary problem or reason that you came to the office. So that's that's still the doctor's role. Now we have you shorten the, we've had to shorten the visit with you because of HMOs and PPOs. They keep cutting every year, they cut down the amount of money they will pay for the time that a doctor spends with you. So the doctors have cut back the number of minutes slash percentage of an hour that they'll spend with you on any one problem. This is really the cause of the drive-by office visit, where you get one problem discussed, and it is never, or usually never, integrated into all your other problems. So many diagnoses diagnoses are essentially missed because there is not time to ask the proper questions and not time to go over everything with you. However, whenever you have a problem such as this, you have to adapt. So the doctors have adapted to their the payment that they're getting, and that has left you on the short end of this deal because you pay for your insurance, but your insurance determines how much time you get. So doctors um, come in the room, and they're going to ask you what your main problem is, and they're going to ask you how you feel, they're going to ask you if it's a if it's a preventive visit. They're going to ask you about the preventive tests that you've taken to see if you've actually done the things they've asked you to do. So I tell my patients who are coming to me for a visit about a problem or a visit for a preventive uh, visit to write down all of their symptoms, the symptoms that they think are, are significant, and write down the primary reason that you're there. So if they write that down, they write down their symptoms, and then they usually in the waiting room will fill in their medical or their meds, the, pre, the history that's happened since their last visit. Like, did they have surgery? Did they have another doctor's appointment? Did something happen, a trauma or, a, uh, or COVID or something like that? So, they ha- so if, as long as they have it in front of them, and they can even make a copy to hand to their doctor, Doctors are usually pretty visual because we have to do a lot of reading. So the doctor will have the list, you will have the list, and you can actually, in your mind, be organized for your visit. So some of the uh, things that I would suggest you don't do, which I've had the experience with multiple times, is many patients don't know what they're really there for, even though in their head they were coming for, say, chronic diarrhea, or they had they have migraine headaches, but they don't really know how to organize their brain, so that, and they don't write it down. So they launch into what they had for lunch that day, that their kids are going to school and they're stressed, that uh, what happened, you know, uh, with their husband last week, 
And the doctor keeps trying to direct them back to, what can I help you with? I mean, doctors aren't going to be able to help you with your husband, except you can only change your own behavior. You can't change somebody else's, so they may refer you to a counselor. But they can't fix that for you. What did you actually go see that doctor for? Did you go to the doctor because you had some problem, or did, are you going for a preventive visit? If it's a preventive visit, it's your time to have a list of questions about how to prevent certain diseases that run in your family or things that you think you might be getting, like you're going to the bathroom more often, you think that your urine is darker, is, is that an issue, do you have diabetes, that kind of thing. But the doctor can't answer 20 questions. He can only answer or she can only answer a few of those questions, so figure out which ones are the, the more, most important because they also have to, in general, if they're a primary doctor, have to examine you uh, to go along with their consultation. Now, in my office, we are talking about hormones. Our exam is essentially the laboratory that you bring us and looking at you and, uh, and what you tell us. But in most primary care, they have to do an exam, listen to your heart and lungs, let's take your blood pressure, your pulse, see if it's regular, sometimes do an EKG, depending on your age. So... Um, one of the things is a cute little story about my mother-in-law. I went with her, um, she, when she lived with us for seven years, I would accompany her to some of her doctor visits and she was in her 80, late eighties. So we'd go to the doctor and she, I'd ask her to organize her notes and things like that. And I guess because of her age, even though she was very smart, she just couldn't organize herself. So I had a list of things that I had heard her say that I was going to help with, but she'd launch into all of the food that she had in the last 48 hours, that she was taking her meds, oh, she forgot this pill, she, forgot, uh, she didn't take that pill. And I mean, the look of confusion on the doctor's face was obvious. He was, he didn't know what she was there for. And so I would have to stop and say, Anne, Tell him why you're here. What is the biggest problem? And she'd say, well, I don't, I, I don't know, because she was nervous. And I'd say, well, you've been asking me about the fact that you ache all over, your arthritis is bad, and you don't know what to do about it. That was her main problem. So then the doctor could go through asking the appropriate questions and then going over different kinds of treatment for her. And between her and the doctor, they decided how to go about treatment. They made a treatment plan. So that visit was much more productive than a visit that where you're just like spitting out all the information you know about yourself to your doctor without a, a plan. So that's, that's kind of my own personal experience. Of course, I've had lots of patients where, honestly, they have a list, but it, it's so long it like rolls out across the floor. Uh, or patients who clip articles and they want me to give them an opinion about these different, um, these different uh, things that, ha that are in the newspaper so, or in their uh, Reader's Digest or online. They bring me all these pieces of paper. One person laid them all out over the exam table. She stood there wrapped in the gown and was laying out all of these different articles, and I had 15 minutes. And I said, okay, you know, I can give you an opinion on each of these articles, or I can examine you, do your pap smear, listen to your complaints, and take care of you, and then you're gonna to have to make a consultation visit to talk about all of these articles, which in general, I now talk about those articles here. You know, if there's a question that needs an answer, then I will go over the research and then make an, have an opinion, and then we'll talk about it on, online. So, but in those days, we didn't have that option, and so I would have to ask people I'd abruptly, do, what do you want to do today? Do you want to do you want to talk about this, or do you want to uh, do you want to actually have a productive visit where I can give you some treatment? <laughs> so, and 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 honestly, if you don't understand what the doctor's visit is about or how it's supposed to be organized, then you can't possibly play your part. So that's why I decided to to do this um, this mini lecture about it. Um, if you have like. We don't know what your other doctor did often. Sometimes there's a, um, an EMR, where, like a computer program, where we can look up what happened with your other doctors. Sometimes we can't. So if you've seen another doctor between the time you saw me last 
and they did tests that affect your health, I would like to have those tests in hand. So if possible, you should have those tests, the results of them, in a file at home and copy them off to take to me so that I can look at them at the time of your visit and give you an, give you an opinion about how that affects what we're going to do today. That's very important because we spend so much time going out to the desk, asking them to try to get the reports. We never get it in time for the visit while we're talking on, on the, in the office. So then we have to have yet another appointment, which is wasting your time, not my time, but you have to come back because we don't have all the information. So be prepared, write your list, write your problems down and your symptoms and, and any other medical problems you've had since you saw me last. And bring me any lab or uh, radiology uh, reports that I can look at or send it to me in my office. I'd rather have it ahead of time so I can have a treatment plan already written up for you. My office visits are an hour. So I have a lot of time to go over your primary problem, what we're going to do with your hormones, what we're going to do with your prediabetes, what we're going to do with your um, abnormal homocysteine level. And I already have a treatment plan tentatively written. Then we go over all of your issues and then go over the treatment plan and we decide, oh, we don't need that. Oh, that I got more information. So I don't, you don't need to do this. You're already doing it. You're already taking vitamin D. So what dose is it? And so I write that in. But for uh, most doctors, they need that at the time of your visit uh, because they can't, they don't have enough time in a day to spend time on your chart ahead of time. They are looking at you right then. They're usually not, uh, they usually don't have a plan. This is a very, we have a very unusual structure because I think that having a plan with a patient is ideal. And that's why we, that's why we do it. We, we know all about you before you walk in the door. Um, once again, if you have related problems, say you had an appendectomy, say you had a cardiac cath, I'd like to have the report from the hospital, um, just maybe the op report or the pathology report. If you had, if you developed cancer since you saw me last, I'd really like to know what kind of cancer it is and how it's staged. So those reports are very important for me to read because it's very hard for a lay person to translate what their doctor told them into and, and then to tell me so I can use that information to manage my treatment. So sometimes my treatment is managed differently. Um, sometimes um, when patients have issues with my treatment, in general, they usually send an email to my nurse or to their nurse practitioner, or they uh, call the office. Emails are probably better so that we can give you a more complete answer. Um, but sometimes patients will have problems after the treatment that they assume is because of the treatment. Now, there's, there is a uh, true statement that because two things happen uh, in succession, it doesn't mean that because of the first thing that happened, the second thing happens. It's not cause and effect. It may just be two independent things. So um, when I have a patient come in and they say, you know, I have, I now have swelling. Well, first of all, I go back to see if they had swelling when they came to me. Oftentimes they already had swelling. So I'm not sure if it's worse or not. It depends on if they showed it to me or if they can describe it to me. However, swelling can be from about 20 things. So it may not have anything to do with the hormone treatment that I gave you. Some hormone treatments, especially oral, do cause swelling, but so does low thyroid, so does heart, heart failure, so does uh, eating too many carbs the night before. So some people are on a very high carb diet and they're swollen all the time. Some people have problems with uh, the veins in their legs and they can't push the fluid back up to the heart. So there's lots of different reasons to have that. So I look back to see if it was already there before my treatment. I also look at the other labs that they have and what we did, and then I have to ask them if they actually followed my directions for a low-carb diet, taking, a, taking the diuretic I gave them, doing all of the treatment plan that I suggested at the time of their visit, and usually I get a, oh, I'm not really, I'm not taking that drug, I'm not, you know, so if you don't do 
what the doctor tells you to do, then you really don't have much room to complain about side effects. You really should be doing what the doctor tells you to do so we know what is in your body, what is what physiology is happening, so that we can then determine if this does have something to do with our treatment or not. So generally we ask you to uh, either go off all your supplements or continue or start on the ones that you're not taking, uh, start on the medications you're not taking, and then see if you still have this side effect. It may be from something completely different. And then we send you to your primary care to look for a different reason because we are specialists in hormones and preventive medicine. So um, sometimes, just as, as I just kind of described, but my favorite is hair loss. Patients come in with hair loss and they still have hair loss after the testosterone and estrogen, and um, they then think it's from the testosterone and estrogen, which in general for women, it's not, because we give a patient spironolactone to prevent hair loss, and estrogen makes hair grow, and testosterone is not the hormone that makes hair fall out, it's DHT. So if you have a lot of DHT, then, that could cause your hair to fall out, but in general, it's usually a thyroid problem or a nutrition problem. People who don't have a lot of protein in their diet, their hair can't grow. If you have too much cortisol or you take a steroid uh, medication, it causes you to have hair loss all over your head. Um, in general, if, it, if it's hair loss from DHT, it's gonna be hair loss here and here on a woman, and it can be uh, hair loss down the center in a man. So we test that hormone. So you come to us with a problem, you, you still have the problem. It, that means it's not really from anything we did. So that's why I always look at the symptoms that you came to me with and the symptoms that, that you're complaining about to make sure that not, it's not new. Then I look at all the other, I look at your thyroid, I look at your DHT, then I know what to look for to see if your problem is due to any of those hormones. If it hasn't changed any, if it's the same as before your treatment, it doesn't have anything to do with anything but maybe inheritance. You may have inherited a gene for hair loss and very thin hair after menopause or very thin hair with men as they get older. They usually pay more attention to that than women do because if it's not your hair loss, you don't generally look at your ancestors or your grandparents and parents and say, ooh, I'm gonna have hair loss, I'm gonna have thin hair when I'm older. You just think, well, that's just them but it does run in families and very thin hair um, is very common. You can kind of look back to all, all of the women in your family and see very thin hair. There's not a lot that we can do about that except to make you as healthy as possible, give you a, the supplements you need to make hair, make sure your thyroid's normal, make sure that your DHT is low. That's what we can do for that. But because you had it before, we give you, the tr we give you treatment of hormones, it doesn't mean that you're going to then, um, we, that we caused it with our hormones. So um, it's, I always wanna know if you've had an illness since your last visit, um, and I may not know how that uh, plays into your current symptoms or your current problems. However, um, you have to understand that sometimes we don't know the answer and we, have, we say we don't know the answer, we can do research on it, we can try to find an answer. Sometimes the research hasn't been done. Sometimes there are problems that I don't have the knowledge to actually diagnose you, so I have to send you to another specialist who can diagnose that problem. There are things that specialists don't know because some other specialist is doing it. That's just how medicine is. Um, some of the time, we don't have the test results that we, can, that we can look at and give you a diagnosis, so sometimes we have to refer to that later. We have to send you an email or have our nurse call you with the results. Um, so in general, doctors don't know everything. We try to know everything, and sometimes it, uh, it bothers us that we don't know everything, so you have to understand that we have to do some research or send you to somebody else to find the answer. We're also not omnipotent. So for, for your side of the doctor's visit, to get the most out of it, please don't get angry with your doctor if they are 
trying to get you back on the subject. That's their job. They have to get the information from you that they need to, to help you. So hopefully they are being very nice. You're having a nice interaction. That's how this works. Um, Write down everything, give them a copy if possible of your symptoms and the reason you're there and any labs or any other illnesses that you have had since you saw me last. And then um, don't ask me about your sister, your mother, your husband, because they aren't there and I can't diagnose them with no information. So that don't distract your doctor from that, from your case. You need an answer. We can't give you any information on those other patients, and we can't talk about any other patients in our practice that we're taking care of unless they write and sign a, a HIPAA form that says you can get the information about them. Otherwise, we can't talk to you about them. So don't try to call and get information. We can't give it to you. It's not our fault. It's a, it's a federal rule. So I'm, hope, I'm hoping that this little talk will help you get through your next doctor visit with the best information, with the best outcome and best treatment that you could possibly have because you prepared yourself, your doctor's prepared, that's what we do. So hopefully you can work together for a common end which is getting you better. And if you don't get an answer from one doctor and they don't seem interested, then you're gonna have to find another doctor of the same kind. You have the right to change doctors to find an answer Please do that because some people just stay with somebody who's not going to help them when they could get help from somebody else. So I hope this helped you. I hope this will uh, change how you deal with doctors and get you better answers and more quality to your doctor's visits. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.